I remember my Japanese teacher, like, she saw me listening, so she pulled my earphone out, put it in her ear, and I was listening to Code Geass, and like, this counter goes, Terrorista? <laughs> and she goes, what? <laughs> Terrorist? <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to the Podcast. As always, before we start, make sure to crush that like button. But in this episode, we continue our conversation with Brit vs. Japan, who is an age adder known for his yearly Japanese progress update videos. In the first episode, we talked about why he ended up quitting Japanese for a period of time and why he stopped uploading videos. And in this episode, we catch up with how good his Japanese is today, nearly six years after first starting to learn Japanese. As always, you have bonus clips on Patreon if you want to support the podcast, but hope you guys enjoy the conversation. I guess like yeah. uh, going back to Japanese, um, what are some of your low points maybe like in your journey of uh, learning Japanese? Oh my, I've had a few. Um, <laughs> I guess, um, I suppose, do you mean in like, uh, like, like progress or like how would you? I guess like maybe plateauing or maybe not wanting to continue okay. quitting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think I've ever really. I guess there was probably one time I can specifically remember where I felt like I perhaps wanted to quit. I don't think I was ready to quit, but um, I remember being in, uh, very vividly, I was in the shower in dorms at uni, and uh, I was just constantly going, why aren't I good yet? Why aren't I good yet? Why aren't I good? Why do I still suck? <laughs> like, and I was just like berating myself. And it was, a, yeah, I don't know why that sticks with me. It was a really weird sort of situation. I think for that entire day, I was just basically beating myself up at, uh, why it sucked which is really weird because when you think about it it's not like a personal issue it's not like how well you are like how well you're studying or not if you're doing age out if you're doing immersion it's just a time thing but obviously I didn't know that at the time and it for me it's just a case of like why you know why aren't I good enough yet the people online they were good enough they were good at this point why aren't I good enough you know and so it's just like yeah I think that didn't help really um and then um, any other points? I guess there was um, a situation where I basically got really cocky and uh, I put on my website, which I thought that no one saw, um, that I, I think I put something along the lines of like, I was really good at Japanese or like I was really high level fluency. And this was before the 18 months period, right? So I was like, okay, I'm really cocky. I'd never even spoken to a Japanese person at this point or besides my girlfriend. And so like, I was just getting really cocky at the time. And then, um, I was specifically remember, I think it was, uh, Patrick, um, Matt's, uh, Matt versus Japan's friend, um, at the time. I, I don't know if he's still, um, in with the community or not. I remember him, uh, pointing it out on Twitter, but like, it wasn't directed at me, but I could tell. And I was just like, oh, sh-. and I felt <laughs> really bad for like quite a while about that. It was quite funny, but, uh, but yeah, it's weird though, because when you're not interacting with native speakers and all you're doing is sitting down listening and reading all the time, and you do get, um, you know, a situation where like you say you've read like a, a really long book, um, you spent all day on it, um, you know, you feel like you're really good. You feel like you've done a lot of work. And so you do get pretty cocky. And then you'll have other times where like you'll read something or like watch a show and you don't understand um, some stuff and you feel like you should understand it because you know, of the previous sort of a lot of work you've done, you feel like really good. And so you'll just have these sort of ups and downs of like, I feel sh- I feel great. I feel, sh- I feel great. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, I had a lot of those. And um, yeah, it was very weird uh, looking back on it. But uh, but I guess now I don't really necessarily care. Like if, if I'm listening to a show and stuff and I don't understand some stuff, I'm like, hey, it's whatever, I'll, I'll pick it up. You know, I've got the rest of my life to master the language i'm not really fussed about a couple of words i've missed you know um so yeah yeah but I'm not getting charged eight thousand dollars for those words yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh, i guess how many hours do you spend with the uh, japanese now oh that's a good question i don't really know off the top of my head i would say i'd spend probably about half the day in japanese half the day in english um, uh, I still because it's difficult as I said before once you get out of the habit of doing it it's very difficult to get back into it and um, I end up watching like English YouTube and like some English content and so it's very difficult to sort of force myself to to go back if that makes sense uh, to mm-hmm. only Japanese 
Uh, but I, I'm working on it. I'm, I'm, you know, unsubscribing from a lot of English channels that I'm watching and trying to, trying to get them out of my feed so that they don't pop up and stuff, you know. Because <laughs> that's half the battle. I swear YouTube just posts like really good videos that you're just like, oh, I've got to watch that. And then it's like, oh crap, I'm taking time out of yeah. Japanese. I mean, I but feel again, like the, the algorithm is really powerful now. It, it can really it suck you in. Really it is really powerful. It really can. <laughs> um, but, you know, as I said before, it's a case of like, I'm not super obsessed with doing age at anymore i'm i'm, I'm still going to do you know i'm not going to do 24 7 immersion is basically what i'm saying i'm still kind of doing age app but not like all the time um and yeah i've got the rest of my life to improve mm-hmm. more my japanese ability it's not like it's the end of the world um so yeah i'd say probably about half the days japanese half the days in english i get a lot more listening um, done when on a day that I'm working, obviously, because I'm sat in a car for 12 hours, so I can just listen to podcasts um, and audiobooks, which is awesome. Um, Do you ever listen to anime anymore? Yeah, I still watch some anime. I don't. Or I mean, like listen, listen, listen to, to it. like passive immersion of anime. Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I can't. I can't. I, there was a phase where I did that. Um, yeah, I did that a lot back in the early stages, but um, since. It's weird since I got relatively, um, uh, since I got to like the 18 months, two years period where I could understand most of it, it was a case of like listening to anime. It's just, it was just, I don't know. I know passively listening to anime just doesn't work anymore because it's just so noisy and so irritating in the ears. Like, it depends <laughs> on the show, I guess, but it's just so like, like lots of grunts. You know, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you have like, you know, girls screaming in high pitched voices and I was just like, oh, I just want to stun audio. People around you can faintly hear like through your earphones. Literally. <laughs> Very yeah, high. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Dude, I remember I I just, I just reminded me I was in the, in my Japanese classes at uni. Um and I remember my Japanese teacher like because basically I, I did the Japanese classes for a bit and I realized they weren't really um, that beneficial. It's like really basic stuff. And so I had one earphone in whilst I was in class, which I did for all my other classes. But this is a bit more personal because like it's only like 10 students in a room and the teacher's like coming over and checking and stuff. So she saw me listening. So she pulled my earphone out, put it in her ear, and I was listening to code Gias. And like this counter goes, Terrorist. <laughs> and she goes, What? Terrorist? And I'm like, uh it's <laughs> like really hard to explain that. I was I was like, I'm listening to anime to try and learn Japanese. And she was like, what? <laughs> and uh, yeah, she told me off for doing that. So uh, yeah, that I mean, there really could have been worse things that she heard. Yeah, they, they definitely like, could, there could have been worse things. Yeah. There could have been worse things. <laughs> <laughs> that was like among the, the top of the worst things. <laughs> you oh, mentioned dude. code Gias. I was thinking like there, there's very, very risky scenes <laughs> over there for sure. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty really right. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, no, I'll never forget that. Actually, that was quite funny because. Um, you know, the next week, I I still kept listening, like, in classes. And she saw me do it again. I didn't quite realize that the last time she actually, like, like told me to stop doing that. I thought she was just, like, joking, me, joking around and stuff. So I kept doing it. She got really angry with me the next week. So I just stopped turning up to class. <laughs> and then <laughs> I was like, bitch, I'm going to learn Japanese by myself. I don't need you. And then um, I just turned up for the test, aced the test, and then that was it. <laughs> so, <laughs> Yeah. It really showed her. My listening to anime in one year um, paid off. Literally. Don't tell me to not do that again. <laughs> oh, <I'm> so good. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Oh, dear, man. <laughs> oh, man. So, I, I guess, um, I mean, you talked about listening to audiobooks and podcasts, mm-hmm. but... You you're also you also talked about how you're consuming media like Attack on Titan, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially like uh, I mean, most of my early stages was just anime. It was all anime uh, up until probably into a year and a bit, and I started filling around with audiobooks. But um, I mean, for the most part, audiobooks still at that time were very difficult um, for me, and I couldn't understand a lot of it. Um, and it wasn't, yeah, I didn't really start using it until later on. But yeah, the most, most of my first year, especially, which is anime, it was just, I, you know, I would just watch so much anime throughout the day. And then, yeah, I would download, um, episodes, convert into MP3 files and just listen to them in my spare time, like sort of online for the first two or three months. I must have listened to like, I don't know how many times. It was just my 24 hour immersion for me for two months at least. 
Uh, it's just ridiculous. <laughs> but it really worked because you're repeating the same sentences over and over again, the same scenes. And you get audio uh-huh. cues from like sound effects and like um, certain mm-hmm. things that are happening. And so you kind of, you remember the scenes and you remember like what's happening. And then because you're right. understanding like what's going on, you, you end up picking up like what's being said as well. Um, right. So yeah, I, it was, yeah, it worked really well, but um, I don't think I could do it again. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, after kind of coming back now, because you said you kind of had some highs and lows where you weren't immersing, now you're kind of getting back into it. Would you say yeah. that, would, would you say after watching anime now, maybe you, you struggle a little bit more with it compared to before, or would you say it's just like before? I'd say for anime, it's basically the same as before. I don't think I've had, um, I don't think of anything I've watched recently that was difficult. I don't think I already have. Um, it's, it's weird because. I don't think I've progressed a huge amount. Like, I've seen other people in the community that have been doing like really well, like uh, basically started around the similar time as me and they've kept going with it and they've done really well. And I've, I've kind of lapsed behind that because, you know, I haven't, I've basically been on and off, as I said. Um, so that's a bit of a shame. Like I've basically, after the two years, I maybe progressed a little bit and I sort of just halted there and I've just flatlined, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, know I haven't necessarily got really good, but um, no, I still think, I still would say my comprehension's still like way up there. My speaking's probably dropped a little bit, but um, it's not like noticeable. Um, yeah, yeah, I can still watch anime and enjoy it. In fact, um, yeah, I've been watching, um, I don't know what it's called in English, Fumetsu no Anate, which is um, the, oh, God, it's, well, it's, uh, it's, God damn it, my brain just stopped working. <laughs> <laughs> my brain just stopped working. Um, <laughs> Yeah, anyway, it's a really good show. Uh, we've been watching that, um, and we've been watching some other stuff. So, uh, but yeah, my comprehension's still like, yeah, it's still, like 99.9%, you know, unless it's something like audiobooks or like something that's a bit harder, history or whatever, you know. But for general, you know, TV content, anime, whatever, it's, yeah, it's still fun. So, is there anything that you, you want to watch, but then you struggle more with? Or is it, do you feel like you've conquered the area that you're interested in? Um, so I, think I, I guess recently I've been interested more in films, especially like um, films that are set in like older times, like the Meiji period and stuff. Um, I remember me and Natsumi were watching, um, oh, I can't remember what it's called now, but it's basically about a bunch of samurai who also cook as well. They're like really good chefs. Um, and it was, it was a really good film, but then every now and then I did struggle with catching up, catching a few words here and there, because obviously a lot of words that I used back then, obviously, um, aren't necessarily used nowadays. And so I don't have much experience with that kind of stuff. Um, and so I'm definitely interested in like, you know, exploring different, um, genres of, of, uh, media and, uh, different topics. Uh, history has always been a thing that I really want to get into, um, mm-hmm. because I think it's fascinating, like, the, the history is absolutely fascinating, but it's never something that I've really sort of tried too hard because every time I pick up a history book, I'm like, Jesus Christ, I don't know any of these names. <laughs> how, how the hell did you read them? And so, you know, it's been, yeah, but that's probably something that I, 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 I want to work on. Yeah. It's trying to expand into those different things. Um, but for the most part, my main, yeah, my big data conversation, all that's fine. Um, mm. I pretty, pretty good at reading uh, books to do with programming and software engineering because I did a lot of my uh, reading when I was at uni. Um, a lot of it came from that because I kind of like combined studying and Japanese. Um, so, yeah. But yeah, there's definitely areas that I really need to improve on. Yeah, yeah. I guess in your video, you said you don't really read that much. So is reading something yeah. you want to get back into? Yeah, um, it's something that... Um, yeah, I definitely did struggle with, um, especially this past year. This past year, I basically didn't know, like, actively picking up a book and reading it, you know. Um, but in the past, yeah, the past month, I've really, um, you know, started reading again. Um, I've been, um, yeah, just reading a lot of uh, books from uh, Itazura Neko, uh, which I don't know if you guys know about, but it's yeah. a really good site, which, I've, pirated which someone shared with me. <laughs> which, you know... Um, uh, absolutely brilliant resource. Um, so yeah, I've been looking through there and reading quite a lot, which is which is good. Um, I've just been sticking with uh, novels for now. Um, just 
anything that piques my interest really. But um, yeah, I mean, that's again, something that I'm going to look into and try and find books on, on history and stuff and try and ease my way in. Um, but yeah, no, I, I've definitely been doing it more, especially with the habit trackers and stuff. I mean, you know, I've been doing at least 10 minutes a day, which is, which is really good. Um, you know, it's better than nothing, which is, you know, compared to some people, some people who are watching this and be like, Oh, I do like two hours a day, <laughs> 10 minutes is nothing, but you know, it's still something. And, uh, um, yeah. I'm trying to read a lot more. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Cause I think that's a lot of where the progress is made as well, especially with vocabulary and stuff is with reading. Yeah. Um, yeah, especially when I, do, I don't do Anki anymore as well. So it's especially more important. It's, a, it's more important that I read um, as well. Um, so, yeah, yeah. When, when did you uh, drop Anki? Because I think I remember you, um, when you were studying German, you were still doing your Anki reps, right? Yeah, yeah. I can't really remember. I remember Man vs. Japan uploading his video on it. And then um, I think I spoke to him about it and then I decided that I would drop it as well even though I think at the time I was, I was probably a bit premature um, I think I probably should have kept it, kept going with it for a bit because I was like my mindset at the time was oh I'll drop Anki and I'll increase my reading but I never increased my reading I never like actually did that and so I essentially just dropped you know the reviewing of a bunch of words that I probably didn't know very well um, and so I think that probably didn't help as much as it, it it should have. But then on the other hand, I did do way too much Anki. I did like two to three hours a day in like reps alone. So <laughs> it was ridiculous. Um, how many car do you remember how many cards you hit at the peak? Uh, I don't know. It's, I mean, it was over a thousand reps. Um, and it was just ridiculous. Yeah. I don't remember exactly how many it was, but it was a lot. Um, yeah, it was at the point where it was unhealthy, basically. <laughs> so it probably was a good thing that I dropped it. But at the same time, for my language ability, I was like, oh, maybe it wasn't a good idea. But um, um, I think at the end of the day, it's better that you are, um, yeah, more healthily mentally than it is <laughs> in New York than your Japanese ability, you know. <laughs> so maybe I think it probably was a good thing. Um, right. But yeah, no, yeah, I definitely want to read a lot more and try. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. I see. So I guess on the on, on the speaking side, you said your speaking dropped a little bit. So do you feel like um, just talking to your girlfriend in Japanese isn't enough to maintain um, a high speaking level? Um, yeah, I think your listening is obviously a major part of it. Um, and I think if you take a year off like I did, and I was still listening here and there, and obviously I was still listening to the girlfriend, but... Um, there's only so much basic conversation a few times a week can do for you. Um, and I feel like even if I watched like an anime here and there, which, you know, I may have watched one to two hours uh, a week or something. I, I don't really know how much I watched, but, you know, even with that, um, I don't think it's enough to really maintain your speaking level to a high level, at least. Um, you'll still be able to obviously speak, you know, relatively normally. But I think over time as well, it will gradually start you know dropping off um and i think the main issue with that is probably pronunciation because you're not um listening so much um you're not getting i don't know enough reinforcements to whether you're saying something correctly um and yeah i just found that every now and then i'd say something and then nats would be like it's not like that it's like this <laughs> and then, like you know uh, which i'm really grateful for doing because you know i wouldn't have noticed otherwise um I, you know, I also do catch myself as well. If I say something wrong, I'll know I've said it wrong. And I'll be like, oh, wait, no, it's this. So, yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting one, really. Uh, but uh, one of the things, I guess, is, um, is yeah, definitely accent, I think. Um, I think I, I've never really studied pitch accent properly. And, like, it's something that I've just started to get into. Um, but I definitely noticed she, Natsumi gets more, uh, she's, been getting more angry with me about my pitches <laughs> if that makes sense <laughs> so I think maybe like I feel like a lot of immersion probably does help with your pitch accent overall but it probably does as I, I know Matt's talked about this a lot and he said obviously um, you still need some sort of active study to you know uh, perfect it but I feel like it does help for um, an overall decent sounding uh, accent and then um, yeah, the less listening you do, obviously, I guess, like, just gradually starts going down. Um, and 
yeah, she's definitely been on it um, about, um, you know, I pitch more than she has in the past. And I've noticed that she's been doing that. So I'm like, oh, okay, my speaking has dropped. Uh, and yeah, but for grammar, I don't think there's been much of a difference. Every now and then, now and then as I say, I'll see something wrong, but most of the time I'll pick up on it. Um, it'll be very rare that I'll, I'll say something incorrectly and I won't pick up on it. Um, but yeah, I mean, for the most part, I only ever speak to that to me. In, um, so I feel like my speaking ability has never really been properly tested. Uh, I've never really gone out. You know, I've never had an interview in Japanese. I've never spoken to um, random people on the street or like, you know, things like that. I, I mean, I guess I did when I went to visit Japan for a little bit, but I've never really, really tested it. So I don't really know how bad it's got. But, uh, mm-hmm. but yeah. Do you think you'll make a, another Japanese update video? Like maybe in Japanese? Maybe, maybe. If I can, if I can get the confidence enough to record one. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like it might take me... Uh, I don't know yet. I guess I'll probably... I don't know. I might wait for another six months, let my ability get back up a bit, and then do one. Uh, I don't want to get butchered by the community. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we'll see. You can have a private showing first. To just yeah, yeah, once I get better again, I, I'll, I'll definitely probably upload more um, of me speaking Japanese. Um, we'll just chuck it into videos here and there just to be like, you know, hey, I do speak Japanese. What I listen to is, uh, oh no, what I'm saying is uh, useful, you know, mm. just like chuck it in. But, <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah, I think I need probably probably about six months on the floor, and I'll probably be back up to where I was, and uh, probably better, hopefully. Uh, right. But yeah, yeah. And I mean, you're kind of been tired. You're, you've had a long journey with Japan so far, and I mean, started with it quite a while ago at this point. So how how would you say your kind of perception of Japan has kind of evolved over time? Oh man. Uh, <laughs> I guess um, I guess it's quite sad to say, but I guess over time my interest for the culture sort of declined a bit. But um, I still see it as like just this wonderful place that I, I have to go and visit and you know and, and go and live at and go and live there for a few years and experience the life and everything. But um, I guess just being more exposed to, it, especially when you're learning the language uh, and you're getting culture through the actual like the source you do learn a lot more about like general um like work ethic and stuff they have over there you you, i do think like going to work over there as a software engineer might be very intensive and you know might be quite a struggle and and so there's sort of little worries and concerns that i get here and there and and also from natsumi she you know she's always complaining about certain things about japan and like living there and she's like oh this is the way they do things is so old and stuff so you 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 know you do get a lot of that and you do wonder if maybe it'll be a good decision to go over there and live but i still think compared to the uk it's definitely a more desirable place to live for me personally um so yeah i don't think it's yeah i guess i still you know really want to go and live there yeah yeah (laughs) So, I mean, I guess, like, even though your your perception of Japan has changed, do you still enjoy, um, like, anime and Japanese media in the same way? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, I I guess the the main thing that I don't enjoy anymore is Japanese YouTube. I don't know if I ever really enjoyed it because it was, uh, I don't know, it's, it's aimed so much at kids that it's just, like, you know, you can, there's only so much of it you can watch before you're like, Jesus Christ, this is boring. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but no, I still really enjoy anime. Um, I did have a phase where like I didn't watch any for quite a while, but um, I've you know after being recommended some really good shows, I got back into it and um, yeah. And then um, yeah, TV and films has always been something that I've never really gone into fully. But um, yeah, every now and then I'll watch a, a good good show or good film. Yeah, and um, yeah, I feel like it'll be, it was worthwhile. Um, yeah, I don't think that's changed too much. Yeah, I still love Japanese music as well. Um, um, I actually, at this point, I struggle to listen to English music. I, I, if the radio turns on, um, you know, I'm just like, nah, I can't. <laughs> I just can't. <laughs> Turn that off right now. <laughs> what, is this, what is this cringe? Right <laughs> but, uh, and 
I, I guess on that, it's a good note to go and close the podcast here. But Matt, at the end of all of our podcasts, we have the classic message to the Kodakara listeners, which can be anything you want it to be. Something funny, something you like, something in Japanese, something in English, oh something <laughs> <laughs> that comes oh, to your mind literally. right now. Oh, the bright fashion. lights are on you. <laughs> <laughs> the pressure is on. <laughs> it's time. I guess if there was one thing I would say, it was is just to be uh, be more present, be more aware of yourself and what you're doing, um, and try and you know um, improve on a daily basis. And as long as you're doing that, you're doing good. You love to hear it. Ending it on a great note. And with that, guys. <laughs> And we'll catch you later. We'll keep those words of advice in mind. Matt got you. <laughs> Thanks for having that, me on, guys. We'll, I hope everyone enjoyed that as well. So we'll catch you on the next one. Peace. Peace. See ya. Thanks for making it to the end of the video, guys. It was great talking to Brit vs. Japan, aka Matt, today. Also, want to go and thank our patrons. Phantom, Madman, Alan, KH90, Drew, Jack, Dylan, and Yui. Make sure to subscribe to catch our next podcast, but in the meantime, go check out the podcast we did with the other Matt, Matt for Japan. So, hope you guys enjoy it. Catch you on the next one. Peace. Peace.